Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here. Get ready for Gnosis. Well, the issue of, and of course one of the founders of modern uh, kind of metaphysical radionics, uh, uh, who had one of the most popular books that pretty much everybody embraced, was uh, G. Harry Stein, who was... Um, one of the founding figures of modern rocketry, a science and uh, technology writer, um, and also wrote a bunch of science fiction books, which I have not really read. I'm not a big science fiction buff. So he's a person who is from uh, Colorado Springs, which is interesting, an Air Force area, uh, and attended New Mexico Military Institute, which is interesting, and Colorado uh, College um, in Colorado Springs, majoring in physics. Um, upon his graduation, he went to work at White Sands Proving Grounds. So military, military, military. First as a civilian scientist, and then in 55 to 57 at the U.S. Naval um, Ordnance Missile Test Facility. So, uh, so Colorado Springs, of course, that's like uh, that's a military neighborhood. He went to military school. So we got to understand this guy is very military based. Um, Um, so this is where he was coming from, um, and uh, he was uh, very interested in rocketry. This was his main thing, uh, to get involved in rocketry and so forth. And still, you know, at this time, it was a little bit um, new, particularly as he was, uh, and there were lots of people in America interested in rocketry that were never supported, uh, thinking that rockets were kind of a joke. And there were all sorts of jokes about Buck Rogers and flying around with people who were involved with rockets. It was laughed at. Uh, so these people were not given uh, much support. And then when rockets became a major um, factor in World War II, people went to the ignoramus boobs and took in the Nazis uh, to get their rocket technology, which left us in terrible situations as we are today. Um, while the Russians, of course, kicked the Germans out and put together a good rocket program, uh, not the imbecilic uh, national or the Nazi Aerospace Association that we have today, which hasn't really done that much in the bigger picture for all the money poured at them. While we were very vulnerable, the Russians had produced inter uh, uh, had produced interballistic missiles that could actually attack the United States with nuclear weapons while we were licking the ass of the Nazis, hoping they would throw their little schnitzers at us to get anything done while they were actually sabotaging rockets and causing all sorts of other problems. After all, they were our enemies, yet everybody thought they would work with us. And Werner von Braun was a mediocre rocket scientist at best. And of course, there was a lot of other people involved in that program. When you bring people in like that, who are very diverse, if you get what we have, we don't even have rockets to get to the space station now. We have to use Russian rockets to get to the space station. Uh, so any work and anything that goes into space right now is not done by NASA. Uh, it's done by the Russians. Pretty sad. Uh, so that's where we've come, even though we've poured billions and trillions of dollars, and now they want to uh, make rocketry into a private uh, business, which we have the other uh, quasi, you know, why we want to turn over rocketry to a guy who sells books and another guy who um, got involved in PayPal is staggering to think that these businessmen know what they're doing. So uh, so you can imagine the kind of crap that's going to matter. And let's not thought, forget about Mr. Virgin. I guess you could say the record dealer, the book dealer, and the guy who was uh, doing Internet payments. That, by the way, he uh, bought that company. He didn't start it. So the whole idea is that um, that becomes all the level. So, um so he's very involved in space, the space program, etc., involved with the U.S. military, involved in White Sands, doing all these things. And um, Stein was the founding member of the Citizens Advisory Council on National Space Policy um, and, and uh, so forth. And um, he prepared a lot of defense papers for, at that time, Ronald Reagan uh, and was involved in Star Wars. So, again, it's a very militaristic view here, and I won't go too much into him. Um, he talked about, uh, he did write a lot of fiction as well about uh, 
robots and AI driven robot military units uh, all this kind of stuff it's, that that he basically talked uh, was involved in um, so he's very much into rocketry very much into all that and a, a very conservative military type and um, he first published and few people know this but his book uh, which was a failure at the time I don't know if uh, it just wasn't ready yet um, the first mind machines you can build was called Frontiers of Science, uh, Strange Machines You Can Build. This was originally published in 1985. I have a copy of that, which is almost a duplicate of mind machines you can build. There's slightly different, not enough difference to even matter. Um, so that was published in 1985 and soon disappeared. As I said, by I'm not sure... Um, who published that in terms of Athium, in terms of whether this was a big um, success or not. And apparently, again, um, he published other books like Handbook for Space Colonists, On the Frontiers of Science, um, all of these things, Making the Weapon that Changed the World, ICBM. And then, of course, uh, the big book that caught on because this was a time when uh, this whole area was really big. Mind Machines You Can Build was published by Top of the Mountain Publishing, which I believe was out of Florida. They also made Little Psychic Wheels and a few other books. Um, you could buy this little kit, which was quite nice for them. So they published the book in 1992. Now, this book... Um, was something that became very popular because it was one of the few, if not the only book, on uh, a way of using radionics in a non-healing um, uh, fashion. Now, most radionics is always based on healing tools, and even if you're interested in that, uh, it's limited. Uh, this was a time when there was an explosion in using uh, more of a metaphysical approach uh, to that. And IGOS was the first to ever build metaphysical radionic machines. Very simple ones based on flow patterns, uh, based on the information uh, that was uh, originally published by in small Llewellyn books by Charles Casamato. Um, which are good little starter books on um, metaphysical radionics. And these were basically the first books out there on that. Uh, these books by Casamato are based on what he called, which is, uh, I like the term, psionics. But psionics comes from comic books and novels and um, the actual patterns of the machines, everything in those books uh, were taken from others, from Pulp Fiction in, in particular, and put together in these good little introductory books. But again, they're very simple books. They're very simple designs. They were kind of fun books, how to make these uh, little machines that are basically thought amplifiers. Now, there were several other books like that as well out there. ESP machines you can build. There was a psionic pattern book I believe this was by Bear. Both of these are available uh, out there today as well. So, I mean, you have all these books that were pre this um, 1992. And, of course, um, this is, um, I forget when Llewellyn stopped publishing Cosmato's two books. Uh, and um, also, I believe it was in the late 70s where Bear's book on ESP machines you can build in the Psionic Pattern book. Now, these are, again, making little um, psychic tools of sorts um, that you could um, uh, spin, help to amplify, etc. So they're fun little books, and you could actually, the uh, ES, the, uh, the Cyan or Pattern book and the ESP machines you can build, both, both had you, were made, the pages were out of a strong uh, paper cardstock, and you would cut these out and assemble them. Kind of cool idea. And... Um, and I said, these are available uh, still today. Uh, you can get them um, inexpensively uh, on the secondary market. And, of course, the first person to deal with kind of magical radionics was Charles Casamato. Now, uh, Stein came up with something that was less based in magic because he was very much against that. He was a, pretty much a crew-cut military uh, guy um, who was not interested in any of that, thinking that everything was science and rocketry. He had a problem with the term occult and didn't want to work with anybody. So... Um, 
Cosmato had these basic books based on his very low-level understanding of electronics and all these things. But again, they were fun books. And uh, we published extra books of his, new books of his, I should say, and uh, tried to get him to write things. But he didn't really know anything other than what was in the first two books, which were just compilations of a bunch of pulp fiction. Um, but it was a good start, and that was he was the first person to ever do that, and we still recommend those two books, nothing else after that, because there's nothing of value there. Um, these are people that don't train themselves and don't have really anything to offer other than what they originally offered. They're not training themselves, they're not learning more, they're not involved in organizations to do that. Um, they are on their own and uh, whatever other strange uh, things they're involved with. So. Uh, so we were the first, IGOS was the first to start building, um, uh, which basically were mostly my designs based on the original designs found in the books by Casamato, who which copied it from other things. So I modified these things to be able to produce them properly and make them usable and make them as attractive as possible as well, instead of his little goofy things like flashlights and using construction helmets and all this kind of uh, really horrible stuff. And and the basic uh, designs and everything else, while the, those designs of uh, energy flow um, are basic understanding in radionics, they're very, very primitive. And how do you manufacture things? So the manufacturing process is a lot different than just some very crude, basic designs. And um, there was absolutely no help there because he doesn't know the difference between a capacitor and a resistor. And so there was nothing electronic he could assist. So we had to do all the research there and how to engineer everything and then figure out how these things could be made. Um, so we did all that and um, uh, produced uh, courses for him, two or three other books, and of course built these uh, machines at that time. But this was all pre-Harry Stein. Harry Stein came after this, uh, and then we built a very sophisticated uh, wishing machine, which uh, you can so you see at the end of this uh, lecture, you'll see a link to the review of that. We just found one of our old machines and are um, refurbishing it. So, um, and of course, you have to build on that as well. Did Harry Stein, G. Harry Stein, know anything about radionics? Well, no, he didn't. He didn't really know anything about it. how he stumbled upon um, Hieronymus is probably through some of his science fiction people that where he was working with. But um, so he knew nothing about it. I mean, he wrote since 1965 handbooks of model rocketry. So he's very big into that 65, 67, 70, 76, uh, 85. Um, he wrote, uh, and these are editions of the handbook, new editions of the handbook on rocketry. And um, so it went all the way up to 1985, a uh, new rocketry handbook by Arco Publishing, a big published in 1977. So you can see in the 70s, 80s, and then finally into the 90s is kind of his last hurrah. Uh, he was uh, publishing um, these mind machine books, but he was already into this uh, study uh, in 1985, and obviously previous to that, he must have had some sort of contact with, um, as I said, Hieronymus type technology, probably in the 70s when it was a little more popular. Um, but he's, you know, this is a space file, as you would call it. this guy, everything about space, robots, and etc. And uh, then he also. Um, wrote a lot of fiction, which again, I'm not a fan of, Warbots 8, which he talks about. And these are kind of disguised books about um, uh, war in space, which uh, he was very connected to as a military person to figure out, well, what's going to happen there? The, uh, because of ICBMs, because of the Russians who now were in space, fully operating, we were way behind. Uh, so the whole idea, he was very concerned about this being, as I said, a rockophile. And of course, this guy from day one has been involved in the military. Uh, probably his father was in the military or he had lots of connections. But, you know, he's living in a military place. That's what Colorado Springs is all about. Um, so he put this together, he put those two books, and as I said, the first book was a failure. My Machines You Can Build did well. 
Uh, a lot of people, everybody that I knew, and I've always recommended people reading this because it's a good kind of basic understanding from a non-metaphysical person. This guy is, you know, straight line type of person, uh, etc. So, um, what happened with Stein is that uh, once I was involved in this, you know, his book ended with the fact that if you need help, uh, I'll be, don't worry, I'll be there to assist you. And he, at the time, he was living in Phoenix, Arizona, not even that far from where I was living in Southern California. But I wrote to him on my uh, International Guilds of Occult Science um, stationery, and he wrote back to me a very cursed letter saying this has nothing to do with occultism, being the military crew cut uh, bozo that he basically was. Um, a, rock, a guy who plays with rockets and uh, is dreaming about that and writing a bunch of uh, science fiction. Um, it's amazing that somebody who'd write all this science fiction and all these other things and how machines can do all this stuff doesn't take into consideration anything past that. And IGUS has always been involved in occult science, meaning this is provable technology. Um, as part of it, as not some woo-woo uh, nonsense uh, or some silly occultism uh, that isn't based in anything, even though that's really what science is. Occultism, even all of occultism, from witchcraft on up, is all based in very scientifically proven uh, methods. And how this works uh, is, is I've outlined for years. Yet science is a figment of someone's theoretical thoughts of things, if ands and maybes, and really based on a bunch of nothing, or we really could say that science is based on Newtonian physics. Newton was an occultist. <laughs> and of course, all the stuff they're doing today is based on occult philosophies and understandings that have come from that. There's, there, it's a big, giant circle that now comes back to the essence of it. But he had a real problem there. Uh, once I got that letter, I responded saying, hey, we're still, we are interested in this. And I said, we have another division called the Advanced Sciences and never heard from him again. So he didn't really help anybody. He did absolutely nothing. Um, no one that I know of uh, uh, did he get uh, with and help get started in this area. After all, Hieronymus is not something that needs help with. There's a huge amount of information there. Peter Kelly, who has now passed away, um, took up his work with him, took up his work, builds his machines, has everything that you want to know about Hieronymus is in Kelly, from Peter Kelly. Uh, his family is now taken over, so you can still get the machines and everything else that is with that. So there's nothing new to be learned there. I'm not sure what Rocket Boy here thought he was going to do to assist people, but certainly didn't do that. And I don't frankly think he had anything to offer past his pitiful little book that took uh, Hieronymus information. But, you know, it's a good start. Where do you go? Where do you get information from? I mean, the problem is there's really not any books out there on this area, period, uh, except a little scatterings of stuff. And they're not, they really don't talk about it. They give you history of radionics and other things. Well, I'm not sure what that means. They're, not, they're really not talking about you know, what it is all about, how to do it, how to make it, what are the energy flows, because they don't know any of that. So I hope to fill that void here in the near future by coming out with a proper um, book on the subject. But I've already got a little mini course on uh, DVDs that come with empowered images um, that you can actually uh, purchase now. Uh, and get the, the foundations. It's only phase one, and there are going to be many, many phases after that. Uh, but we're hoping to come out with a more succinct little booklet or some other information uh, to do that. But this is, again, the problem with this industry. Certainly, um, it would be nice to uh, had someone come in to share what he, knowed, he knew, but the bottom line is... <clears throat> I'm assuming he put everything he knew about Radio uh, Hieronymus there. So, but a very closed minded person, a guy who wants to play with rockets and really uh, isn't being connected with the real world. Um, so, uh, what he left was fairly pathetic, other than his little, uh, very dated now understanding of space and AI and other things. Um, and his fiction, whatever that is, which is basically based on war in space, not uh, too surprising. Um, 
and most of his writings uh, on space and everything else were in the uh, started in the late 1950s and went into the 70s, um, which you know that's an awful long time ago. Space technology is way advanced to that, uh, and I don't know about his basic model rocketry. I'm assuming that hasn't changed much, and I'm sure his handbooks on rocketry are probably pretty good. And how has that changed? <clears throat> well, I don't think most of it has changed. All that rocketry stuff is pretty much similar. So I'm assuming his books are still good. I'm not sure what the breakthroughs in model rocketry are today. Uh, but it certainly is interesting. Uh, this is a problem with all of these people that don't go. So he didn't go to the next level. He was a uh, arrogant thing. And... <clears throat> Um, apparently didn't really want to work with people and didn't even bother to follow up to find out where uh, people were coming from and what they were doing, etc. So uh, he died in Phoenix, Arizona in 1997. So you can see that that's um, um, pretty much five years after his book was published again by Top of the Mountain. So it wasn't really much time there, but certainly he didn't do anything in that period of time. He died at the age of 69. So he died pretty premature, uh, premature so I'm not sure how well his, um, apparently of a stroke, is what he died of in Phoenix, Arizona in November 2nd, 1997. So uh, he certainly wasn't using that technology, which he claimed to have healed his daughter of acne, uh, on himself to prolong his life. 69 is a very young age to die at. Your average life expectancy, uh, which includes everybody and everything, is about 80 years old now, with the average person living into their middle to late 80s. And this has been going on for hundreds of years, by the way. It's not now. Isaac Newton lived to be 87. Isaac Newton. You get that? So who was alive 500 years ago. The average lifespan has always been in the middle 80s, and of course certain things have cut that down. Modern life is reducing lifespan, not increasing it. So the whole idea is that um, that is the reality of it. So as with all these things, you have to really wonder, you know, if you can't, unless you have some innate health problems that you plagued you all your life, you should be able to get to that uh, pretty much 80 years old without a problem. Uh, he didn't make it, as a lot of uh, radionic practitioners seem to have t uh, problems with and healers in general. But that's the interesting story of, of uh, G. Harry Stein. Um, as I said, you can find his book all over the internet. Just do a search for it. You should be able to find it somewhere for free to read. Um, uh, as he has died and is just out there. So it's one of those things that, you know, if you don't grab it and read it, well, uh, it's not being published. Nobody owns it. It's just sitting there, so grab it. So it is a good book to read as an introduction. There isn't very many of these out there, as I've said. So this is a good idea of finding it by a guy who technically is a rocket scientist in some ways. Um, uh, so... Um, it's something that people who don't have credibility, like uh, other more uh, metaphysical or cult writers, you know, people that have no background and who are just kind of writers, uh, like Charles Casamano, I mean, they don't have any credibility whatsoever. Uh, here's a guy who, for regular um, people, has a certain credibility, and he verified the results of this technology, oddly uh, verifying it. He verified energy as well, the spin of things, the right uh, spin in terms of the clockwise spin that empowers the counterclockwise spin that doesn't. So he got into all this, and then uh, I'm not sure how he connected this with uh, his very uh, uh, practical, common, schmiantist viewpoint, uh, how he's able to reconcile this when he wrote a book about it. He must have been fascinated by it because it's there, it's proven. What are you going to do about it? So he was logical enough to do that, but he was not logical enough to follow through and to make things um, to a point that he started to investigate this at a higher level. So when you're closed-minded, when you don't want to talk to other people and get their opinions of what they're doing, or to go to people in a field that are 
physically working in it know what they're doing like a producer of radionic equipment well you can get a lot of information from them what are they doing how are they doing it he thinks he has solutions well I don't know if he has solutions but he certainly uh, should have been uh, out there doing much more in rocketry and in this area in general and pretty much didn't. He retired uh, to uh, Phoenix, Arizona, as many people do. Uh, and of course, the book he wrote was uh, written, as he said, in it must have been in the early 80s, maybe it was written in the 70s, was originally published as Frontiers in, uh, in Science in 1984. So it wasn't for another eight years before 1992 that it was republished again and I'm not uh, and that was because of the big spurt in uh, which happened through that whole period of time in the 90s where radionics exploded particularly what I call the advanced scientists exploded the Tesla society was going free energy was being looked at radionics all the old things was kind of the rebirth of all this the renaissance you could say of alternative science and thinking and this is when everybody was exploding so the point is, is that uh, these things became a, um, a phenomenon at that time, and his book uh, uh, rode that wave. And apparently, I don't know who Top of the Mountain Publishing was, but they also came out with a book on pendulums and, as I said, a psychic wheel, which was kind of nice. You put it; it was a uh, out the size of a little paperback book in terms of the way it was packaged. Uh, the actual wheel was about two inches by two inches in a little plastic uh, box, but they sold these out there so people could have psychic wheels, and um, this is another great thing. It's even difficult to get psychic wheels in this day and age anymore. So we have all that stuff, uh, and um, uh, that, was, uh, that shows you how popular things were. Pendulum, psychic wheels, radionic books, all that in 1992 by this one little publisher. So it... Um, so I don't know who that was, but it just shows you that. But his book caught on. Uh, once he passed away and they stopped publishing that book, the book has sold as much as $500 out there uh, for an original copy. And even today, if you try and find an original copy of My Machines You Can Build, you're probably going to, uh, it's going to cost you a bit. There's so many of them out there now, you may be able to find, if you want a physical copy, inexpensively. Check the links below uh, for that. So, um, uh, we, but you can get it free online. It's all over the place. Do a Google search for that, and you can probably find some PDF hanging around. As I said, Stein is dead. Uh, no one owns this, so uh, you should access the information. And generally, authors are more than happy for people to access their work when they're gone um, if nobody is publishing it. So this is very exciting uh, when this type of book came out to have this verification. But as you know, we run into the same old problem here. These people really don't help. They're not interested in helping. And this was a very closed-minded, militaristic person who has very little value and probably couldn't think past his nose. Uh, after all, we have to understand the military-industrial complex and all of its problems um, has really created a giant network of failure as the military really has achieved nothing and as we continue to be in a uh, 1984 syndrome as the book stated uh, 1984 uh, of having perpetual wars because the military can't win anything so here we go again and of course this kind of thinking hurts everybody so you know he's left a book it's a good book past that we really need is not really until next time